Good morrow, scholars. Welcome back to Star Wars. I have a new addition to my arm, thanks to Iggy. Interestingly enough, uh oh, get out of here. He wasn't that difficult. I just am afraid to try and clip his nails. We are in page 164, 64, uh, chapter 9. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm wearing the same t shirt. Now, I'm not one of those guys. You see, what it is, is uh, I sleep in the clothes I had the night before. Uh, in this case, I was wearing my work uniform. I put this shirt on yesterday morning for the... When I woke up and uh, I got dressed for work. Because I had to get ready early so that I could go have lunch with... Anyway, that's not important. So I'm wearing this shirt again because I don't want to waste another shirt. I've I've only worn it for like six hours in the last two days so I'm not one of those people I don't know what that's supposed to mean as they traveled farther and deeper into the bowels of the gigantic station they found it increasingly difficult to maintain an air of casual indifference fortunately those who might have sensed some nervousness on the part of the two armored troopers would regard it only as natural considering their huge dangerous wookie captive chewbacca also made it impossible for the two young men to be as inconspicuous as they would have liked the farther they traveled the heavier the traffic became other soldiers bureaucrats technicians and mechanicals bust bustled around them intent on their own assignments they ignored the trio completely only a few of the humans sparing the wookiee a curious glance chewbacca's morose expression and the seeming confidence of his captors reassured the inquisitive eventually they uh, reached a wide bank of elevators luke breathed a sigh of relief the computer controlled transport ought to be capable of taking them just about anywhere on the station in response to a verbal command there was a nervous second when a minor official raced to get aboard solo gestured sharply and the other without voicing a protest shifted to the next elevator tube in line luke studied the operating panel then tried to sound at once uh, knowledgeable and important as he spoke to, uh, into the pickup grid Instead, he sounded nervous and scared, but the elevator was a pure response mechanism, not programmed to differentiate the appropriateness of emotions conveyed vocally. Huh, that's something to think about. So the door slid shut, and they were on their way. After what felt like hours, but was in reality only minutes, the door opened, and they stepped out into the security area. It had been Luke's hope that they would discover something like the old-fashioned barreled cells of the kind used on Tatooine in towns like Mos Eisley. Instead, they saw only narrow ramps uh, bordering on a bottomless ventilation, ventilation shaft. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. These walkways, several levels of them, ran parallel to smooth curving walls which held faceless detention cells. Alert-looking guards and energy gates seemed to be everywhere they looked. Uncomfortably aware that the longer they stood frozen in place, the sooner someone was bound to come over and ask unanswerable questions. Luke searched frantically for a course of action. This isn't going to work, Solover whispered, leaning toward him. Why didn't you say so before? A frustrated, frightened Luke shot back. I, I think I did. I... Shh! Solo shut up as Luke's worst fears were realized. A tall, grim-looking officer approached them. He frowned at, as he examined the silent Chewbacca. Where are you two going with this... thing? Chewbacca snarled at the remark, and Solo quieted him with a hasty jab in the ribs. A panicky Luke found himself replying almost instinctively. Prisoner transfer from block TS-138. The officer looked puzzled. I wasn't notified. I'll have to clear it. Turning, the a man walked to a small console nearby and began entering his request. Han and Luke hurriedly surveyed the situation, their gaze traveling from alarms, energy gates, and remote photosensors to the three other guards stationed in the area. Solo nodded to Luke as he unfastened Chewbacca's cuffs and then whispered something to the Wookiee. An ear-splitting howl shook the corridor as Chewbacca threw up both hands, grabbing Solo's rifle from him. Look out! A seemingly terrified Solo shouted. It's loose! It'll rip us apart! <laughs> both he and Luke the had darted clear of the rampaging Wookiee, pulled out their pistols, and were blasting away at him. Their reaction was excellent, their enthusiasm un undeniable, and their aim... Execrable. I feel so stupid. Not a single shot came close to dod 
uh, to the dodging Wookiee. Instead, they blasted automatic cameras, energy rate con uh, controls, and the three dumbfounded guards. At this point, it occurred to the officer in charge that the abominable aim of the two soldiers was a bit too selectively <laughs> efficient. He was preparing to jab the general alarm when a burst from Luke's pistol caught him in the midsection, and he fell without a word to the gray deck. A lot of people die. Solo rushed to the open comm link speaker, which was reaching anxious questions about what was going on. Apparently, there uh, there were audio as well as visual links between this detention station and elsewhere. Ignoring the barrage of alternate threats and queries, he checked the uh, readout set in the panel nearby. We've got to find out which cell this princess of yours is in. There must be a dozen levels in. Here it is, cell 2187. Go on, Chewie, and I'll hold them here. Luke nodded once and was racing down the narrow walkway. After gesturing for the Wookiee to take up a position where he could cover the elevator, Solo took a deep breath and responded to the unceasing ca calls from the comm link. Everything's under control, he said, uh, into the pickup sounding reasonably official. Situation normal. It didn't sound like that, a voice snapped back in a no-nonsense tone. What happened? Uh, well, one of the guards experienced a well weapon malfunction, Solo stammered, his temporary official ease lapsing into nervousness. No problem now, we're all fine, thanks. How about you? We're sending a squad up, the voice announced suddenly. Han could almost smell the suspicion at the other end. What to say? He spoke more eloquently with the business end of a pistol. Negative, negative. We've had an energy leak. Give us a few minutes to lock it down. Large leak. Very dangerous. Weapon malfunction? Energy leak? Who is this? What's your operating... Pointing his pistol at the panel, Solo blew the instrumentation to uh, silent scraps. It was a dumb conversation anyway, he murmured. Dang it! Turning, he shouted down the corridor, Hurry up, Luke. We're going to have company. Luke heard, but he was ob absorbed in running from one cell to the next and studying the numbers glowing above each doorway. The cell 2187, it appeared, did not exist, but it did, and he found it just as he was about to give up and try the next level down. For a long moment, he examined the featureless convex metal wall, turning his pistol to maximum and hoping it wouldn't melt in his hands before it broke through. He opened fire on the door. Uh, when the weapon became too hot to hold, he tossed it from hand to hand. As he did so, the smoke had time to clear, and he saw with some surprise the door had been blown away. Peering through the smoke with an uncomprehending look on her face was the young woman whose portrait R2-D2 and projected in a garage on Tatooine several centuries ago, or so it seemed. She was even more beautiful than her image, Luke decided, staring dazedly at her. You're even more beautiful than I... Oh, yeah. This is awkward. Her look of confusion and uncertainty was replaced um, by first puzzlement and then impatience. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper, she um, finally commented. What? Oh, the uniform. I also do that. He removed the helmet, regaining a little composure at the same time. I've come to rescue you. I'm Luke Skywalker. I beg your pardon, she said politely. I said, I've come to rescue you. Ben Kenobi is with me. We've got your two droids. The uncertainty was instantly replaced by hope at the mention of the oldster's name. Ben Kenobi? Uh, she looked around Luke, ignoring him as she searched for the Jedi. Where is he? Where's uh, Obi-Wan? Governor Tarkin watched as Darth Vader uh, paced rapidly back and forth in the otherwise empty conference room. Finally, the Dark Lord paused, glancing around as though a great bell only he could hear had rung somewhere close by. He is here, Vader stated unemotionally. Tarkin looked startled. Obi-Wan Kenobi? That's impossible. What makes you think so? A stirring in the Force, of a kind I've only felt in the presence of my old master. It is unmistakable. Surely... Surely he must be dead by now. Vader hesitated, his assurance suddenly gone. Perhaps. It is gone now. It was only a brief sensation. The Jedi are extinct, declared Tarkin positively. Their fire was quenched decades ago. You, my friend, are all that's left of their old ways. A calm link buzzed softly for attention. Yes, Tarkin acknowledged. We've had an emergency alert in detention block uh, AA-23. The princess, Tarkin yelped, <laughs> jumping to his feet. Vader whirled, trying to stare through the walls. I knew it. Obi-Wan is here. I knew I could not mistake a stirring of the force of such power. Put all uh, sections on alert, Tarkin ordered through the comm link. Then he turned to stare at Vader. If you're right, he must not be allowed to escape. 
Escape may not be Obi-Wan Kenobi's intention, Vader replied, struggling to control his emotions. He is the last of the Jedi, and the greatest. The danger he pre uh, presents to us must not be underestimated, yet only I can deal with him. His head snapped around to stare fixedly at Tarkin. That would be so creepy. Alone. Luke and Leia had started uh, back up the corridor when a series of blinding explosions ripped the walkway ahead of them. Several troopers had tried coming through the elevator only to be crisped one after another by Chewbacca. Disdaining the elevators, they had blasted uh, a gaping hole through the wall. Opening, uh, the opening was too large for Solo and the Wookiee to cover completely. In twos and threes, the Imperials were working their way into the detention block. Retreating down the walkway, Han and Chewie uh, encountered Luke and the Princess. We can't go back that way, Solo told them. His face flushed with excitement and worry. No, it looks like you've managed to cut off our only escape route. Root, do you guys say... Never mind. No more arguments over pronunciations. Leia agreed readily. This is a detention area, you know. They don't build them with multiple exits. At least one of them is smart. Breathing heavily, Solo turned to look her up and down. Breaking your forgiveness, your highness, he said sarcastically, but maybe you'd prefer it back in your cell. She looked away, her, her face impassive. There's got to be another way out, Luke muttered, uh, pull, pulling a small transmitter unit from his belt and carefully adjusting the frequency. C-3PO, C-3PO. A familiar voice responded with uh, gratifying speed. Yes, sir? We've been cut off here. Are there any other ways out of the detention area? Anything at all? Static crackled over the tiny grid as Solo and Chewbacca kept the Imperial troops bottled up at the other end of the walkway. What was that? I didn't copy. Back in the gantry office, R2-D2 beeped and whistled frantically as 3PO adjusted controls, fighting to clear the awkward transmission. I said, all the systems have been alerted to your presence, sir. The main entry seems to be the only way in or out of the cell block. He pressed instruments, and the view on the nearby readouts changed steadily. All other information on your section is restricted. Someone began banging on the locked door to the office evenly at first, and then with no response uh, forthcoming from within, more insistently. Oh no, 3PO groaned. The smoke in the cell corridor was now so intense that it was difficult for Solo and Chewbacca to pick their targets. That was fortunate in as much as they were now badly outnumbered, and the smoke continued fused the Imperial's fire with equal thoroughness. Every so often one of the soldiers would attempt to move closer only to stand exposed as he penetrated the smoke. Under the accurate fire of the two uh, smugglers, he would rapidly join the accumulating mass of motionless figures on the rampway flooring. Energy bolts continued to ricochet wildly through the block as Luke moved close to Solo. There isn't any other way out, he yelled over the deafening roar of the concentrated fire. While they're closing in on us, what do we do now? This is some rescue, an irritated voice complained from behind them. Both men turned to see a thoroughly disgusted princess eyeing them with regal disapproval. When you came in here, didn't you have a plan for getting out? Solo nodded toward Luke. He's the brain, sweetheart. Luke managed an embarrassed grin and shrugged helplessly. <laughs> really? No, I would totally do the same thing. He turned to help return fire, but before he could do so, the princess had snatched his pistol from his hand. Hey! Luke stared as she moved along the wall, finally locating a small grate nearby. She pointed the pistol at it and fired. Solo gazed at her in disbelief. What do you think you're doing? It looks like it's up to me to save our skins. Get in that garbage chute, flyboy. While the others looked on in amazement, she jumped feet first into the opening and disappeared. Chewbacca rumbled threateningly, but Solo shook his head. No, Chewie, I don't want you to rip her heart, uh, her apart. Sorry. I'm not sure about her yet. Either uh, either I'm beginning to like her, I'm going to kill her myself. <laughs> the Wookiee snorted something else, and yell Solo yelled back at him. Go on in, you furry oaf. I don't care what you smell. This is no time to go dainty on me. Shoving the reluctant, uh, reluctant Wookiee toward the tiny opening, I would also have a problem with that. Solo helped jam the massive bulk through. As soon as he disappeared, the Corellian followed him in. Luke fired off a last series of blasts, more in the hope of creating a covering smoke than hitting anything, slid into the chute, and was gone. Not wanting to incur further losses in such a confined space, the pursuing soldiers had momentarily halted to await the arrival of reinforcements and heavier weapons. Besides, they had their quarry trapped, and despite their dedication, none of them were anxious to die needlessly. The chamber Luke tumbled into was dimly lit, 
Not that the light was needed to discern its contents. He smelled the decay long before he was dumped into it. Unadorned except for the concealed illuminance, the garbage room was at least a quarter full of slimy muck much of which had already achieved a state of decomposition sufficient to wrinkle Luke's nose. Solo was stumbling around the edge of the room, slipping and sinking into his, uh, up to his knees and the uncertain footing in an attempt to locate an exit. All he found was a small thick hatchway which he grunted and heaved to pry open. The hatch cover refused to budge. The garbage chute was a wonderful idea, he told the princess sardonically, wiping the sweat from his forehead. What an incredible smell you've discovered. Unfortunately, we can't ride out of here on a drifting odor, and there doesn't seem to be any other exit unless I can get this hatch open. Stepping back, he pulled his pistol and fired at the cover. The bolt promptly went howling around the room as everyone sought to cover in the garbage. At la a last glance, and the bolt detonated almost on top of them. Looking less dignified by the moment, Leia was the first to emerge from the pugnant cover. Put that thing away, she told Solo grimly, or you're going to get us all killed. Yes, your worship, Solo muttered in a snide uh, supplication. He made no move to reholster his weapon as he glanced back up toward the open chute above. It won't take long for them to figure out what happened to us. We had things well under control until you let us down here. Sure you did, she shot back, brushing refuse from her hair and shoulders. Oh, well, it could be worse. As if in reply, a piercing, horrible moaning filled the room. It seemed to come from er from somewhere beneath them. Chewbacca let out a terrified yowl of his own and tried to flatten himself against the wall. That would be me. Luke drew his own pistol and peered hard at a at various clumps of debris, but saw nothing. What was that? Solo asked. I'm not sure. Luke suddenly jumped, looking down and behind him. Something just moved past me. I think. Watch out. With sh shocking uh, suddenness, Luke disappeared straight down into the garbage. It's got Luke, the princess shouted. It took him under. Solo looked around frantically for something to shoot at. <laughs> as abruptly as he had vanished, Luke reappeared, and so did part of something else. A thick, whitish tentacle was wrapped around uh, Titus' throat. Shoot it! Kill it! <laughs> Luke screamed. Shoot it! I can't even see it! Solo protested. Once again, Luke was sucked under by whatever that gruesome appendage was attached to. Solo stared helplessly around the multicolored surface. There was a distance, uh, distant rumble of heavy machinery, and two opposing walls of the chamber moved in uh, inward several centimeters. The rumble ceased, and then it was quiet again. Luke appeared uh, unexpectedly close to Solo, scrambling his way clear of the suffocating mess and rubbing at the welt on his neck. What happened to it? Leia wondered, eyeing the quiescent uh, garbage warily. Luke looked genuinely puzzled. I don't know. It had me, and then I was free. It just let me go and disappeared. Maybe I didn't smell bad enough for it. I've got a bad feeling about this, Solo mu murmured. Again, the distant rumble filled the room. Again, the walls began their inward march. Only this time, neither sound nor movement showed any sign of stopping. Don't just stand there gaping at each other, the princess urged them. Try to brace them with something. Even with the thick poles and old metal beams, Chewbacca could... Uh, handle, they were unable to find anything capable of slowing the wall's advance. It seemed as if the stronger the object uh, was that they placed against the walls, the easier it was snapped. Luke pulled out his comm link, simultaneously trying to talk and will the walls to retreat. 3PO, come in, 3PO. A decent pause produced no response, causing Luke to look worriedly at his com companions. I don't know why he doesn't answer, he tried. C-3PO, come in, do you read? C-3PO, the muted voice continued to call. Come in, C-3PO. It was Luke's voice, and it issued softly in between buzzings from the small hand comm link resting on the deserted uh, computer console, save for the uh, intermittent pleading. The gantry office was silent. A tremendous explosion drowned out the muffled pleadings. It blew the office door clean across the room, sending metal fragments flying in all directions. Several of them struck the comm link, sending it flying to the floor and cutting off Luke's voice in mid-transmission. In the wake of the minor cataclysm, four armed and re ready troopers entered through the blown portal. Initial study indicated the office was deserted until a dim, frightened voice was heard coming from one of the tall supply cabinets near the back of the room. Help! Help! Let us out! Several of the troopers bent to inspect the immobile bodies of the gantry officer and his aide while others opened the noisy cabinet. Two ro robots, one tall and one humanoid. Uh... Uh, excuse me, one tall and humanoid, the other purely mechanical and three-legged, stepped out into the office. The taller one gave the impression of being half-unbalanced with fear. 
They're madmen, I tell you, madmen. He gestured urgently toward the doorway. I think they said something about heading for the prison level. They just left. If you hurry, you might catch them. That way, that way. Two of the troopers inside joined those waiting in the hallway and hustling off uh, down the corridor. That left two guards to watch over the office. They totally ignored the robots as they discussed what might have taken place. All the excitement has overloaded the circuitry and my companion here, 3PO explained carefully. If you don't mind, I'd like to take him down to maintenance. Hmm. One of the guards uh, looked up indifferently and nodded to the robot. 3PO and R2 hurried out the door without looking back. As they departed, it occurred to the guard that the taller of the two droids was a type he had never seen before. He shrugged. That was not surprising on a station of this size. That was too close, 3PO muttered as they scurried down an empty corridor. Now we'll have to find another information control console and plug you back in, or everything is lost. The garbage chamber grew remorselessly smaller. Remorselessly? Yeah, there we go. Smaller. The smoothly fitting metal walls moving toward one another with uh, stolid precision. Larger pieces of refuse formed a concerto of snapping and popping that was rising toward a final shuddering crescendo. Chewbacca whined pitifully as he fought with all his incredible strength and weight to hold back one of the walls looking like a hirsute tantalus approaching its his final summit. I don't know. One thing's for sure, Solo noted unhappily, we're all going to be much thinner. This could prove popular for Slippy. <laughs> the only trouble is its permanence. You gotta admire someone who can make a joke at their own impending death. Luke paused for breath, shaking the innocent calm link angrily. What could have happened to 3PO? Try the hatch again, advised Leia. It's our only hope. <laughs> Never mind. Solo shielded his eyes as he did so. The ineffectual blast echoed mockingly through the narrowing chamber. The service bay was unoccupied, everyone apparently having been drawn away by the commotion elsewhere. After a cautious survey of the room, 3PO beckoned for R2 to follow. Together they commenced a hurried search of the many surface panels. R2 let out a beep and 3PO rushed to him. He waited impatiently as the smaller unit plugged the receptive arm carefully into the open socket. A superfast flurry of electronics spewed in undisciplined fashion from the grid of the little droid. 3PO made uh, cautioning motions. Wait a minute, slow down. The, the sounds dropped to a crawl. There, that's better. Uh, they're where? They what? Oh no, uh, they'll only come out of there as a liquid. Less than a meter of life was left to the trapped occupants of the garbage room. Leia and Solo had been forced to turn sideways and had ended up facing each other. Wait, what? Mm. For the first time, the haughtiness was gone from the princess's face. Reaching out, she took Solo's hand, clutching it convulsively as she felt the first touch of the closing walls. Luke had fallen and was lying on his side, fighting to keep his head above the rising ooze. He nearly choked on a mouthful of compressed sludge when his comm link began buzzing for attention. 3PO! Are you there, sir? The droid replied. We've had some minor problems. You would not believe... Shut up, 3PO! I mean, he kind of needs that right now. Luke screamed into his into the unit and shut down all the refuse units on the detention level or immediately below it. Do you copy? Shut down the refuse... Moments later, 3PO grabbed at his head in panic as a terrifying screeching and yelling sounded over the comm link. No, shut them all down, he implored R2. Hurry, oh, listen to them, they're dying. R2, I curse this metal body of mine. I was not fast enough, it was my fault, my poor master, all of them. No, no, no. Oh, 3PO. The screaming and yelling, however, continued far beyond what seemed like a reasonable interval. In fact, they were shouts of relief. The chamber walls had reversed direction automatically with R2 shut down and were moving apart again. R2, 3PO, Luke hollered into the comm link. It's all right. We're all right. Do you read me? We're okay. You did just fine. Brushing distastefully against uh, at, or at the clinging slime, he made his way as rapidly as possible toward the hatch cover. Bending, he scraped an uh, accumulated de detritus. Never mind. Away. Detrus. I don't know. Detritus. There we go. Noting that number thus revealed. Open the pressure maintenance hatch on unit uh, 366 117891. I don't know why I said the number that way. Yes sir, came 3 pos acknowledgement. They may have been the happiest words, uh, words Luke had ever heard.
Okay, so, you know, about 16 pages. Eh, I don't know. I didn't check. Well, that was exciting. Mm, I feel like there was something I was going to mention. Oh, well, that's not important. But just so you guys know, that little contest, the whole can you spot all the differences between the book and the movie, is still going on. So if you noticed any in this chapter, let me know down in the comments. And whoever gets the most by the end of the book, that is to say, um, Star Wars, will do Empire Strikes Back as its own. And the same with Return of the Jedi. We'll get either a shout out on my channel or, I don't know, some special kind of prize. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, until next time, goodbye everybody.